Well, hello and welcome to Leo season. Are you ready to get vulnerable? Are you ready to focus in on some of your inner child needs? Hi, my name is Tamara Bartmus. I am an astrologer, energy worker, and natural wellness educator, and I'm excited to dive into a quick synopsis of what you can expect during this upcoming Leo season. There is a reason that we call Leo the lion. It has a lot to do with that stereotypical lion heart, a big presence, but also a very tender heart. Now, depending on your experience with Leo energy, you might not perceive it this way. But as we get into Leo season, it really is an opportunity to explore the Leo part of who you are. I have some tools to help you do that. So make sure to stick to the end where I'll introduce you to some great tools to help you understand your own personal Leo nature and how to support it. Leo season invites us to explore the emotions that were surfaced during cancer season and find a healthy way of expressing them and getting proper feedback through our creativity and other forms of expression. Now, sometimes this means that we have to take some risks and this is where the strength and the vulnerability of Leo begins. It can build confidence or lead to insecurities and vulnerabilities. Because of this dynamic, it often exposes some of our deepest inner child wounds of needing to be seen, as well as learning how to tap into our inner child and play again. Sometimes our childhood was not much of a childhood, depending on our circumstances, and we never really learned what it feels like to be creative or to play or to express ourselves. Leo season encourages us to get in tune with our heart and find expression for that. The talent or the ability to express oneself does not even have to be perfect. The process of self-expression helps you with proper feedback and confidence building. And at the core of it, it's remembering that we are all creators and it's the practice of creating that Leo invites us to explore. Here are the key events I want you to pay attention to as we go through Leo season. First, the sun entered Leo on July 21st at 1.44 a.m. Hopefully you were all sleeping. And the interesting point of this entrance into Leo is that it creates an opposing energy with Pluto retrograde in Aquarius. And this will go throughout the whole entirety of Leo season. With the sun opposing Pluto retrograde in Aquarius, we do introduce some themes around a rebirth of our identity or the things that are keeping us from being reborn. Maybe some of the karmic and generational patterns that need to be addressed so that we can be transformed and be reborn. This can show up on a personal level, of course, because of that retrograde energy, but it also might impact the group energy and how we show up as ourselves in group settings. It can be hard to know how to be yourself in a group setting because a group energy tends to want conformity and Leo energy wants to shine. This opposition creates a tension between how much do I let myself shine? How much do I expose of who I really am without being rejected by the group? This can impact our sense of self and our sense of confidence, but it also can be this rebirthing moment that true self-expression can invite people around you that truly understand and appreciate your unique gifts and talents. On August 4th, there will be a Leo new moon. Now this is a switch. We've been beginning every season with a full moon. And because we just had a full moon at the end of cancer season, we are going to begin Leo season with a new moon at 12 degrees, 34 minutes. It'll be at 5, 14 a.m. mountain time. A couple of things to pay attention to will be the continuation of this minor grand trine, which is Mars in Gemini as the apex, as well as Mercury stationing retrograde on that same day. Now the full moon will be pause. And it, the Aquarius full moon is not on July 5th. The Aquarius full moon is August 19th. Two weeks later on August 19th, we will be having the Aquarius full moon at 27 degrees, 15 minutes at 12, 25 p.m. Mountain Time. And this is the third full moon of the summer season, making it a blue moon, which brings its own energy. On that day, we will see that Mercury has just passed the halfway point of retrograde season, as well as a fixed T-square in the sky. I plan on doing videos on the Leo new moon as well as the Aquarius full moon. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can see those videos as soon as I drop them. There are a few additional significant events that we can plan on during this Leo season. This minor grand trine will continue on through a few more months, creating a trine aspect between the energy of Pluto retrograde in Capricorn and Uranus direct in Taurus. Now they sextile at the apex point of Neptune retrograde in Pisces. 
this because this aspect will be around for a significant period of time, I want to do an additional video on this just to explore the nuances of that energy and the impact that we can experience personally because of these retrograde planets. Another interesting event during Leo season will be on July 26 when Chiron stations retrograde in Aries, and this will continue throughout the rest of the year, stationing direct on December 29th. Chiron in Aries will naturally expose a lot of our wound of self, our ability to live in fear or tap into our courage, which also deserves its own videos. So look for that coming soon. On August 4th, we will see that Mercury goes retrograde in Virgo, and this retrograde will continue until August 28th which will be during Virgo season. If you would like more information on what to expect during Mercury retrograde, make sure to check out a simple video that explains what to expect during Mercury retrograde season this time around. And then on August 14th, we will see Mars and Jupiter conjunct in Gemini. Now, if you've been following the stars, you probably have heard that Mars and Uranus recently went conjunct in Taurus, creating some very intense, sporadic, and interesting energy. We can anticipate to see some of this energy start showing July 29th and the approach to this August 14th conjunction, and then some of the energy that wanes off through August 28th. In fact, the energy of this conjunction will conclude the same day as Mercury stations direct in Leo. Now, I promised that I would share some tools that you can use to help understand what do these astrology signs mean and how does it impact you. I have put together a workbook and journal that you can purchase on Amazon. It's still in review, but should be available at any moment. So make sure to check the description below for the link to that book. It covers everything that you would need to explore your Leo energy, as well as the Leo new moon and the Aquarius full moon helping you really explore what can you learn about who you are and what is showing up for you in your birth chart because of this Leo season. Another free tool I highly recommend is getting your own Zodiac sign specific essential oil cheat sheet. This helps you look at the different layers of every sign, the different energy of Leo and its physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual layers, and what essential oils can support you through that experience. And it has it for more than just Leo, of course. It also has it for all the other signs of the Zodiac. So if you're into learning how to use natural tools to support your energy through the ups and downs of a Zodiac season, make sure to check out this free resource for you. As I wrap this up, I just want to remind you, what does the Leo sun rule in the body? Well, we can expect our heart to be impacted as the sun moves through the Leo sign, along with circulation and our spine, as well as core organs for digestion, like our liver, our spleen, and our gallbladder. You can see some of the upper back is going to be influenced, as well as the forearms and the wrists of the body. So if you're into lymphatic drainage or working out, pay attention especially to these muscle groups so you can support your body as it gets recharged by the sun moving through Leo. Now to wrap this up, I want to introduce you to an essential oil called Sunny Citrus. This is a limited time blend, which is not available for purchase, but what is perfect for this energy season. So I'm going to give you my personal recipe to create this blend on your own, and you can get the oils to create it in the description below. Now this is known as the oil of enjoyment. It includes grapefruit, essential oil, wild orange, and peppermint. One of the things that's wonderful about grapefruit is how it helps us really connect to our body. Wild orange really brings out our creativity and peppermint can help us tap into greater joy when we feel overwhelmed. All of these are also very supportive to our lymphatic system and to our digestive system. Now, if you're gonna make your own blend to put into a diffuser or into a roller, the ratio that I recommend is about one to one. So one drop grapefruit, one drop wild orange, and one drop peppermint. I will put in the comments below an actual recipe for a 10 mil roller that I energy tested to be a good support for you during this season. Because these have citrus oils in it, make sure you dilute it with fractionated coconut oil or jojoba oil. And don't apply to your skin topically before you go out in the sun because the citrus oils are photosensitive. So use it in the morning under your clothes or at night before calming down for bed. And if you're not applying it topically, put these in the diffuser, one drop of each, and maybe an extra drop of one of the scents that you really love. Sunny Citrus in this combination is a great reminder to reconnect with the childlike part of yourself, the part that isn't 
burdened by the stresses of life. There are some of us adults who have forgotten how to play. It might be harder for us to laugh and enjoy ourselves or find the humor or the creativity in everyday moments. We can become stagnant and cynical. We can even become apathetic or feeling like life is really constricting us. Sunny Citrus is a blend that reminds us to tap into our inner child, our inner creativity with love and humor. It reminds us to embrace abundance and to look for the lighthearted and simple moments that bring us joy as if we were a child. At its core, its reminder is that maybe stress is best alleviated by play. If you found this video helpful, make sure you like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos coming during this Leo season to help you learn to nurture love and empower yourself. I'll talk to you soon.